Hi, it's Dwyer, richarddwyer.com, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. Here on this side, we discuss famous cases. I'm a Northern California attorney um, who from time to time looks at famous criminal cases or criminal defendants, and then we look at the evidence and raise some arguments on whether or not the person's conviction was the right call by the jury. Now let's touch on a real unsavory case, right? Understand the accused here, Scott Peterson, got the death penalty for allegedly killing his very pregnant wife, Lacey Peterson, and their unborn child, Connor. Now let me say up front, we have a requirement in America in criminal cases that guilt be proven beyond a reasonable doubt. That's especially important in capital murder cases. Now let me say up front so you understand where I'm coming from. I personally believe that Scott Peterson killed his wife. But let's play devil's advocate to make sure the legal standard of beyond a reasonable doubt has been met to make sure that we're not allowing a crowd dynamic to influence whether we would vote for guilt or not guilty which is different than a vote for innocence right now can we agree that the theory here that was put forward by the prosecution is that Scott Peterson killed his wife himself right that this was not a murder for hire now let me ask a very basic question right which quite frankly we would have to ask ourselves if we were going to rule on this case as a juror right the question is do we know how Scott Peterson killed his wife what evidence do we have as to the method of death? Was it by strangulation? Did he hit her in the head with an object? Did he stab her? Did he smother her with a pillow? Do we know? If you discuss the method of murder with 12 of your friends, would the 12 of you agree on how he killed his wife? Wouldn't that involve a lot of speculation? Let's go further. What facts in this case tell you how he got her out of the house. If you believe he carried her out of the house, what did he carry her out of the house in? Did she leave the house voluntarily and then get killed elsewhere? Do we know? Remember, this is a death penalty case, right? If you're unsure on the method of death, and if you're unsure on where the killing took place, then how could you be sure that you have the right guy? Let me say this. In fact, if you're voting to convict, what are you voting to convict him on? Right? Because wouldn't you necessarily have to reach a conclusion on how the crime you're voting on took place if you're going to meet the beyond a reasonable doubt standard? Now let's talk about the prosecution. The prosecution wanted you to believe that he strangled her. 
right? On what evidence did they base that? If it's on a lack of evidence of anything else, then that shows you that the evidence was lacking, that it was scarce to non-existent on the manner of death. Do we know the manner of death or are we speculating? Now, if you believe he strangled her, what did he strangle her with? Did the prosecution prove to you that they had, let's say, a scarf, an item of clothing, a rope? Did they present something to you that they could identify as something he used to strangle his wife with? Do we know what he strangled his wife with? If it was with his bare hands, do you believe that it's easy to strangle someone to death with your bare hands? Keep in mind, folks, a police officer actually examined Scott Peterson, did not find that he had been in a struggle. Let me ask another question, right? Because it seems to me that we really don't know much about this crime. Do you even know when Lacey was killed? Was it the night before Scott goes fishing? Or did he kill her that day? The prosecution theory, what's it based on? Is there an ear witness who heard noises coming from the house? Is there any evidence of when exactly Lacey was killed? Now, let me back up a bit. Let's talk about some of the more provocative parts of the case, right? How well do any of us know the people involved? Now, I think we know that Scott Peterson was a bit of a cad, that he was stepping out on his wife, that he was an adulterer, that he was a player. Now, he lies to women. He doesn't disclose that he's married. Right now, are his lies to women to cover up his marriage? And if so, is this the first time in your life that you've ever heard of a cad lying to cover up his marriage? Let me share some facts of this case. Right? that didn't really get as much media attention as perhaps they should have received to give a fuller context. Scott Peterson meets a woman while he's on the road in his fertilizer salesman job. Very early in the conversation, I mean very early in the conversation, he starts talking about his favorite sexual positions. Very early. She tells Scott that she's engaged. Scott says, in effect, so what? Right? He's obviously looking for, we'll call it, some romance. Right? Now, believe it or not, it is this woman who then introduces Scott to Amber Fry. Now, let me say this. Amber Fry may well be a saint. She may be a nun. But let me ask the obvious question. Is that who you think her friend thinks she is? Right? Keep in mind, the friend has just met a guy who's talking about his favorite sexual positions. The friend then thinks about Amber Fry. Right? Think about it. This is after Scott then runs a red light and is basically saying, hey, you're engaged, so that's not a problem for me. Right? The friend's like, whoa, whoa, player. You know what? I'm not going to travel this road. But I have someone in mind for you. Now, 
let me say this. What if this is, in this Ashley Madison world, what if this is all grown folk stuff, right? According to the facts that have come out about this case, after Scott starts dating Amber Fry, a friend tells Scott that he's going to tell Amber that Scott was married, right, in three days, if Scott did not reveal his marital status to her, right? Now, let me say this. According to Amber Fry, Scott Peterson then tells her, and this is while Lacey's alive, Peterson then tells her that his wife had died, right? Now understand, this is not taped, right? It's not taped. The claim that Scott told Amber that his wife had died, right, is based on Amber Fry's testimony, right? Now, what evidence do we have that Scott actually told Amber that his wife had died before Lacey actually went missing? Right? We have Amber's word. How do we know that it's true? Now let's go one step further. On January the 6th, this is the infamous phone call. Scott calls Amber Fry, who by this point has contacted law enforcement and is actually tape recording the conversation. Right now, in this conversation, Scott actually admits that he's still married. Now, let me say Amber in the conversation tries to get him to admit on tape that he previously told her before Lacey went missing that his wife had died. Scott at first denies it. Eventually on the tape, Scott kind of you know, agrees with what Amber is saying about whether he told her beforehand that his wife had died. Now, let me say this. And again, right, we're living in an Ashley Madison world. There are millions of people who are out there committing adultery, according to the Ashley Madison hack. Right? If you're talking to a mistress and she insists that you told her earlier that your wife had died, aren't there many men out there who, after disagreeing at first, will simply say whatever they think their mistress wants to hear to keep the relationship going? Right? Aren't there husbands who will disagree with their wives? But if their wife has a firm conviction about facts that the husband might disagree with, might then say, okay, okay, honey, right, you're right, right? We'll make concessions. Is the concession that Scott makes in what I consider to be a vague and ambiguous January 6th phone call enough for you to deem it an admission by him that he told Lacey that his wife had died before Lacey went missing. Let me also point out, men who have affairs, maybe some of you are watching this film, right? Aren't there many men who, in talking about a wife, will offer an excuse in conversations with their mistress, right? Where they'll say things like, you know, we're separated. We were having problems, right? She doesn't understand me. Aren't lines like, we're separated, we're no longer together, right? We live in our own separate worlds. Aren't those variations of Scott's line to his mistress at the time that, hey, you know, I was married, but my wife has died, right? Let's go further. Let's talk about the phone call during the prayer vigil. Remember, they have a rally, 
right there talking about Lacey Peterson right neighbors are out it's a prayer vigil it's also to get information out on a hotline you could call and reward money being offered for information that would help people find Lacey and Connor because at the time it was unclear whether Lacey and Connor were still alive right authorities also wanted information that would help solve the crime now Scott Peterson is on the telephone at that time we know Amber Fry is taping the conversation we have a tape of the conversation and Scott of course is lying to Amber right Scott claims he's in Paris now many people are offended by that this is a man talking to his mistress at a vigil for his missing pregnant wife right now let me just say this you know that there are couples that actually have problems we really don't know the state of Scott and Lacey's marriage at that moment in time right we know in hindsight at least we think we do that Lacey was dead by that time but we really don't know what happened in that marriage, right? We do know that Lacey Peterson goes out to a party, right? Right before she goes missing. And we know she goes out to that party by herself, right? We know that, right? She's at the party by herself wearing the red dress. Famous photograph of her in the dress sitting in a chair right so she's out by herself at a party is it completely incomprehensible to consider an argument that perhaps Lacey and Scott were having problems that she's at the party by herself because the two of them are having problems now understand in society right people go from one relationship to the next sometimes so soon after the earlier relationship that we actually have a term for it we call it a rebound right a rebound relationship right many people jump into the new relationship too soon now what if Scott's telling us the truth what if his his wife goes missing and he suspects that she's left him he suspects that she doesn't want to have the baby while she's still with him let's say they've been having problems right sometimes pregnancies bring families together sometimes they don't right now if Scott Peterson has been having problems marital problems and if he believes his wife has has left him and he's on the phone with his mistress the woman he was dating while he was married right if he's on the phone with his mistress and he's trying to make sure the fire is burning with his mistress that he could segue into that relationship while that behavior is caddish while it's loudish while it's not admirable behavior while it diminishes his relationship with Lacey does that behavior prove to you that Scott Peterson murdered his wife couldn't another interpretation be that okay Scott's wife left him right as far as he knows Scott's wife's left him he wants to hold on to his mistress he sees his mistress as his future 
as bad as Scott's behavior is at the vigil, does it really prove to you that he killed his wife, and if so, how? Right? Let me ask you, a guy who has a mistress, who then has marital problems, right, and adults were in that position, do you believe that Scott Peterson is the first such adulterer to then try to convince his mistress that, hey, we have something real here? Let's also talk about the location where the bodies are found, right? This is a big ticket item. Understand, Modesto is not close to the Berkeley Marina, right? The bodies, of course, are found not too far from where Scott claims he went fishing. Okay, fair enough. Let me say this. If Lacey were killed by others, where would be a good place to dump or plant her body? Let me offer a suggestion. What about where her husband said he went fishing? Wouldn't that be the best place? Let's say I'm an evil person. Right? Keep in mind, the dog is found outside with a leash. Right? The dog's outside the house. A neighbor sees the dog and puts the dog in the backyard. Let's say that I abduct Lacey while she's walking her dog. Right? Because, of course, no one sees Scott let the dog out the house. Right? We don't know how this dog with the collar on, with the leash attached, ends up roaming around in front of the house, right? Now, let's say I'm a neighbor or I'm some evil person passing through the neighborhood, right? And let's say that I abduct Lacey Peterson, right? You know what? If I've abducted Lacey Peterson and then public attention turns to her husband as a suspect. And the husband says, look, I didn't do the crime. I was over here fishing at the time of the crime. Would it be out of the ordinary for me to then think, okay, if something happens with Lacey, let's say I've abducted her because she's pregnant, right? And I think, hey, I can make money selling this baby, as macabre as that sounds, right? Let's say something goes wrong. Right? Let's say Lacey ends up dead. Wouldn't the best place for me to put that body be where the boyfriend or husband said he was, the one everyone suspects? Now, Lacey's body is found in the water. Do we know with certainty how long her body was in the water? Folks, we don't even know. How Lacey left the house right if you believe Scott killed her we don't even know what date Lacey was killed think about it right let me go further the prosecution wants you to believe that Scott Peterson made some homemade anchors that he supposedly used to keep Lacey's body under water the argument is that he attached these homemade anchors, concrete anchors, to her arms and her legs. Keep in mind, her body is found, right, just a torso, without a head, without arms, without the legs, right? The idea is that these anchors weakened those extremities to the point where they broke and her body and Connor's then floated to the surface. Now, keeping in mind that it's the prosecution's burden to prove this crime beyond a reasonable doubt, and given that this is the prosecution's theory, that Scott Peterson, a fertilizer salesman, right, not a carpenter, not a fishing expert, supposedly made concrete homemade anchors, let me ask the obvious question. Where are those anchors? 
if they're concrete anchors, wouldn't they still be in the water? Now, in a case that costs more than $4 million to prosecute, right? The taxpayers paid more than $4 million to prosecute this case. How come the prosecution can't spend the money to find the anchors? Without the anchors, isn't this just a theory? Folks, the bay is still there, right? How come the prosecution can't scour the ground of the bay? to find these anchors because I'll tell you if they find the anchors and can link the anchors to Scott in my opinion that would help solve the case right that would at least allow us to reach the conclusion that Scott's anchors were used as part of Lacey's murder we don't even have the anchors. To sum up, aren't there simply too many theories in this case for a conviction? If you don't know how Lacey was killed, if there's no evidence that Scott Peterson was in a struggle that night, right? if we don't know how the dog got outside the house, how Lacey herself got outside the house, whether Scott's anchors were used, then what exactly do we have? A guy cheating on his wife, right, calling a mistress, right, who of course was introduced to the guy after the guy hit hard on her friend. Right? That's what we have. Right? I'll agree. Scott's not someone I would want dating my sister. I'm not here voting for Scott for husband of the month or year. Right? I personally feel it's a hunch that Scott killed his wife. But what exactly did the prosecution prove? Do I know this beyond a reasonable doubt? Hardly. Folks, we don't even know conclusively how Lacey got to the Berkeley Marina. Right? Let me say this too. If Lacey ran off and then got killed by someone, right? I'll tell you what. That person would have a big incentive to dump the body in the Berkeley Marina. Now, wouldn't they? Because we know dumping the body in the water would wash away a lot of forensics. Also, the fact that it's in the water would seem to implicate Scott, who claims he went fishing. Right? So, I do have a problem with the conviction in this case. No, I don't believe Scott Peterson is a good person. But how could we have a legal standard? such as proof beyond a reasonable doubt, and not even know the manner of death, the date of death, right? How he transported the body to the Berkeley Marina. Why is Scott showing us a receipt that he was in the Berkeley Marina if the prosecution theory is true that he actually has homemade anchors that he used to dump her body there? Also, the idea that Scott had homemade anchors and they can't even show us the anchors used in the actual murder should tell you how thin the evidence was here. Right? Now that some time has passed since this death penalty conviction, you remember the celebration after it was announced. Don't you feel the evidence here? is a bit lacking. Aren't you concerned that we're inflating the idea of 
a guy having an affair telling his mistress that his wife died. Right? Suddenly we're supposed to believe that at that time, which happens before Lacey goes missing, at that time the guy knew he was going to wait until Christmas Eve to then kill his wife. Does that argument completely follow to you? Keep in mind, that alleged conversation is untaped. Right? As I said, Amber Fry might be a saint. Why do we believe her credibility is above reproach? Right? Didn't she write a book on this case? I have problems here. I know many of you are going to disagree with me. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section to this video. Let me point out, too, that I've represented more than one woman in a domestic violence case. I understand domestic violence is very serious. I'm not here to condone domestic violence in any shape or form. What I'm simply here to do is to make sure that in criminal cases, guilt is actually proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Understand, a jury isn't voting on guilt or innocence. They're voting guilty or not guilty. Really, what not guilty means is not proven. In other words, I could sit in court and have a hunch, right? Have a hunch that Scott Peterson killed his wife, right? It's up to the prosecution to remove any reasonable doubts I may have. Here, the case seems to be built on boorish behavior and taped phone conversations that, quite frankly, fall very short of a confession. And you're supposed to make a leap of faith that the prosecution's version of events without any evidence is what happened. Right? Scott strangled his wife. Really? Where's the evidence of that? Right? Understand, they couldn't say Scott hit her over the head because there isn't enough forensic evidence at the house. Right? So I'm supposed to believe that, okay, he, you know, Scott Peterson, who as far as we know, hadn't killed anyone before, doesn't have a problem strangling to death his pregnant wife and is able to do so without getting hit, without getting kicked without getting bruised, right? I think the evidence here is incomplete. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments here in the comment section to this video on YouTube. Thanks for stopping by.